everybody, Invisible Katani here, doing a video for Ruby Volume 4. I recently, I actually like just finished watching um, the leak footage for the uh, Volume 4 information, so I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to do a video, because I've wanted to do this for a very long time, and it was really obvious where things were headed based on the end of Season 3, but I didn't really sit down to do like my speculations and stuff, and I never really took the time to sit down and do this sort of video. But I always wondered, like, once the season ended, I was like, there's a lot of speculation, of course, with this drastic change, what's going to happen. Of course, everyone wants to know if Yang is going to get, like, a metal robot arm, which I hope she does, because if you saw the footage, if not, I'll put a link in the description. But um, if you've seen the footage already, uh, if you saw the, the scene where they show Yang, it just... It's not, you know, she's not like happy-go-lucky Yang, and you wouldn't be. It's like you got up and, you know, amputated, and it's, it messes you up a little bit. So I wanted to sit down and finally do this video since we actually have now a little bit of information on what we're going to see from Volume 4. And, you know, we have, of course, a new team, which I've, con you know, considered calling Team Junior, even though we have a character that is named Junior as a villain, even though he hasn't shown up in the show yet. Um, you know, we have... You know, Jean, Nora, Ren, and Ruby, and since Ruby joined, you know, what was uh, Team Juniper, I'm considering it Team Junior, because she would be the last R. So, we have the team together, and of course, with Ruby being, of course, the main character, we get to see her through most of this footage, and I loved it. You know, when it first started off, um, you can see that her cloak is different. It may be, it may have been uh, just the way it was recorded, where her uh, cloak looked way lighter, but I'm pretty sure it was like a very bright red. It was almost orange, actually. It was very similar uh, to her mother's from uh, the opening of the most recent volume. So it may actually be her mother's cloak because that was a very bright um, sort of reddish-orange color. So it may actually be her mother's cloak. And I thought it was really cool. And, you know, as she was walking, I'm like, I'm pretty, you know, people assumed that it was her mother at first. And then, you know, we see that it's actually Ruby. And when they showed her, I was like, it looks like she's you know, Tala is like, I'm pretty sure this is a time skip, it's not just, oh, she has an alternate costume, I'm like, this is a time skip, like, they skipped a bit of time, and I was trying to look for information, but someone mentioned in the comments, they said it was about six to eight months, um, previous, uh, from the previous, uh, volume, and it seems like it's even more time than that, like, because everyone seems, like, way taller, and I thought that was, because that's what I first noticed, I was like, she looks taller than this, and I thought it might have been, like, two years. I thought they may have skipped like two years, but it makes sense. It could be the six to eight months and she would just grow because they were fairly young. So especially for her because she was only uh, 12 years old compared to everybody else. So it makes a lot of sense that she could definitely grow and everyone else would grow like a little bit, but still stay relatively the same. But we'd see a very noticeable difference um, in her character because she was the shortest person in the series. So that I noticed right off the bat, I was like, okay, outside of the fact that she was just utilizing her semblance like crazy, which I loved, and she's flying all over the place, she was doing like, um, I don't know how many of you may have played the old game on PS2 called Shinobi, when they, like, I think it was like the first 3D version of Shinobi, but that character has like a super long cloak, um, like a scarf. So when you run around and stuff, the it's just like all of the, it's like the very generic ninja thing, but it looks really sweet, even though it's super impractical. It was a lot like that, but it's her cloak, and like she'd be running so fast, it was almost like a scarf where it would seem like it would kind of stretch out and get like really small. And I love that it was like she, you know, really utilized her semblance. She's getting, she's gotten like much more powerful. It's because there was at one point, I don't know what they're gonna tell us as far as that explanation, but the part where it looks like she splits into three little, um, basically like the three little bullets, like when she gets really fast. She kind of splits into three and then reforms together. I don't know how they're going to explain that, but I can't wait to get one because that was amazing. I was like, I don't know how this works. I don't know if it's going to be maybe the, there are so many rose petals, it becomes completely solid. And she's, you know, it's um, it's almost like um, an illusion sort of deal. So she's one of the images, but the other two are just flat out rose petals. Or she's moving so freaking fast, which... I don't think this would be the case, because if that was the case, she could just basically run through the enemy and kill it. But either it's kind of the illusionary thing where two of the images are rose petals, or she's moving so fast that she's, you know, all three at the same time. But like I said, if she was moving that fast to make three solid images, I would assume she would just cut straight through it. And, like, she could basically run through it like the Flash and just, like, destroy it from the inside. Plus, we got to see her move around really fast and... She kind of had the after image thing going on, so I don't believe that it was like that. I think it might be the rose petal sort of illusionary thing. But that was really cool. We also have uh, the main 
villain of this actual footage a new Grimm, which I thought was great. It's a Gorilla Grimm. Um, it looks a lot like Gorilla Grodd if you watch The Flash or just know of, you know, The Flash. Looks just like Gorilla Grodd to me. I mean, it's just a giant gorilla, so it's kind of easy to make that comparison, to be totally honest. But I love the new Grimm. Uh, I believe it's called, like, a Burgall or something like that. It's, it's very interesting because it has, like, a W, and after the W is, like, a G, so I'm not sure how to really pronounce it. But it looks really cool. I'm excited to see that. The Grimm, which I noticed this before they said it because the video I saw had a little bit of footage where they showed off some of the art and they talked a little bit about it. But in the video, I could tell it's like the Grimm are like emanating darkness. Like it's almost like um, black smoke was like coming off of some of the Grimm. And I thought that was great. I was like, that's really cool. Like you could tell that, you know, it's been a little while. Like it's just Grimm and it's more powerful than it's ever been. It's not just, oh, it's the Grimm kind of just roaming around in the forest and it's kind of simple. The Grimm have taken over this entire, you know, section, really, like this really big important section of the world, and they've destroyed it. And I thought that was great. It shows how even after, like, the main event has happened, they continue to grow. Like, there were still fires and stuff because they were still destroying buildings and things like that. And I just thought it was really good. And, of course, there's still, with all this time and how the world works, there's still this giant separation because they took out the tower and the way they have everything set up is like once you take out one tower everything's gone so maybe that still plays an effect maybe that's how they continue to grow and i wouldn't be surprised if they kind of hit on the fact that they're you know ruby isn't the first person i'm sure to go back and try to take out a bunch of grim and see what's going on and how things have escalated i'm sure there have been other hunters and huntresses that have gone in some may not have made it out and that would explain how the grim also got much more powerful because their despair while dying, their friends despair watching their other friends get killed off, stuff like that would just make the Grimm even more powerful, as well as, you know, bring in even more Grimm, which, you know, is how we get the new one. So, love that idea that got, like, you know, just black, like, basically, like, demonic spirits, like, you know, oozing off of them, which look cool, and they have kind of, uh, sort of like the laser eyes when they move around. So I was like, that looks really cool. Um, I'm excited. Hopefully we get some more new Grimm as well. That would be very cool. We still have our dragon kind of frozen in the tower, I would assume. They didn't, you know, show that off. But I would assume it's still frozen in place. But I loved what we got to see. It wasn't much, but we got to see a lot of great action. You know, Ruby just going all out. You know, new costumes for all the characters. And I'm really excited for it. I thought it looked really good. The action was really great. You know, she's, you know, she faces a really tough challenge, but she's she handles it and she takes care of it eventually and she's flying all over the place with the super speed and it just looked really good the new outfit is very reminiscent of her old one it's it's um really just a bit of a color change for the most part it's still fairly the same but i thought that was cool i thought that was very interesting and then when she um opens up her scroll uh we get to see the rest of uh like i said what i'm considering team junior so we get to see Jean. He didn't really look different, and it, like you said, it was the footage that I saw it was a little bit whited out, so I couldn't really see too much of him. But he didn't look different, but Nora clearly had longer hair. Ren clearly had longer hair as well. And then when they show the moon, they transition to the rest of our girls, and we get to see Weiss kind of just at home. We get to see uh, Blake, who's kind of just standing on a pier, looking off into the water. And then we see Yang, who's kind of just sitting down, and... The, like the way it was done where she's kind of just sitting and she's kind of like just opening and closing her hand it kind of seemed like at this point she's decided you know what I need to get back out there but I have to figure out how to make this work now because I only have one hand it seemed like that's what it was like you know it almost seemed like she may or may not have been training during that scene like she was kind of just contemplating like how do I utilize just this one arm that I have like I have to make this my weapon and it kind of seemed like that's how it played out. Like everything, you know, it's super vague, so obviously this is all speculation. But it just made me curious because she was just sitting outside. And what they didn't do it was like, oh, she's in the house or something and looking at the moon like everyone else is. And they, uh, the way they do it I thought was interesting because it seemingly was real time. And it transitioned from Ruby to Weiss and it was still nighttime. But when it went to Blake and Yang, it became daytime. So they're in, you know, different parts of the world. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it just has me curious, of course. I love all the new costumes. We got to see the most, I'd say, of definitely uh, Blake and Yang. But I saw uh, some of the artist footage of it, and it looks really good for the new costumes. They still have, they have both a short dress as well as a, a long dress for Weiss, which I thought was cool. Um, 
it's more bluish purple, which I thought was very interesting, of course, knowing, you know, mostly the girls, it's like, you know, we have red, white, black, and yellow. So they've really changed it up. They've kind of manipulated a little bit the, you know, the color spectrum, because like I said, with uh, Ruby's cloak, it's definitely uh, her mother's, which is more of a more of an orange than it is a red. So I like that idea. It's still her, but it's closer to orange, I would say, than it is to red. And then with Weiss, it's not really white at all. It's it's kind of a purple blue, which I still think looks really cool, actually. So that's interesting. Um, Blake's I actually look, thinks looks the coolest, and it's actually very reminiscent of her alternate costume. And it seems like that's what they took it from. So. She's got, like, the long jacket on. It's actually super sweet. I think that's my favorite new costume. I'm like, man, I like, you know, it's just a long white jacket. It has, like, the black, her black semblance, um, her emblem on the back. So I was like, that's really cool. I thought that looked sweet. Um, the rest of her outfit is pretty cool. It's fairly separated. So um, I don't know how often we'll actually see this. But, of course, with um, all the different art, they show the characters. Like, she had her jacket. So they show her without the jacket. And it's kind of like... Um, it was, um, it wasn't exactly a tank top. I think it was like a, a short sleeve t-shirt almost. And then she has like the black pants and stuff. So I don't know how often we'll really get to see her like, you know, take the jacket off if it's over encumbering her or whatever. Um, not like fall off style, just it's in the way sort of style. But I thought that looked really cool. And of course, Yang, you know, she still has, you know, a yellow a shirt on. But it's very, um, dull, you know, compared to what she had before, which was kind of the yellowish brown and black um sort of cowgirl style look and this is very down to earth like she's it's almost just very you know neutral almost and like she has the yellow shirt but everything else is kind of just gray and she's just kind of relaxed so i like what they're doing with the costumes i'm very excited to see if they do any changes to um you know jean nora and ren and it seemed like they still had the same costumes at least the top parts because of course we kind of only see their heads and a little bit of their chest so it could be the same top wise and they could easily change it if they want to i mean that's those are just pictures that could have been you know like when you have a really old picture of someone on your phone it could be the exact same thing and then we see them and they have like wildly different costumes or something so i'm really looking forward to that i was kind of hoping we'd see jean in this so they're still saving it but i was like they wouldn't do something crazy like that where you know jean comes in to help ruby out and he you know finally uses his semblance that would have been awesome but you know, it was solely based on Ruby, and then there's all, of course, like, all the other things that have happened, you know, that we've seen in Volume 3, and going off of the ending of the most recent volume, one of the big things I think we're going to see is a lot more of the adults. That's kind of what I think is going to be the biggest change um, through this, you know, most recent volume, which I'm excited is coming out in October, you know, that we got an official date, it's not like, oh, it's coming soon, it's October 22nd, it's officially going to be coming out, so I'm excited for that. But I think we're going to be getting a lot more of the adults. I think we're going to be getting a lot of um, Crow and Raven. I think we're going to see a ton of them because they had like their little hints and stuff like that. And it was kind of revealed, um, you know, most late towards the finale. And a lot of people speculated this, but the Crow or the Raven uh, that was looking after Yang, all those random things and stuff, that was actually Yang's mother. And we find out that that is an actual thing where people can transform into creatures. So I'm looking forward to that. Of course, we're definitely going to find out what happened with Ozpin because they had Crow find his weapon underneath all this rubble and stuff. It's like I searched, all I could find was this weapon. So if there's nobody, he either escaped and couldn't find anyone or his weapon was like, I just got to get out of here or he was taken. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was taken based on the way they did the ending with our new uh, villain, or villainess, and I can't think of her name right now, but considering how they how they did her dialogue, and it's like, oh, you know, there are a couple of references in there that are mentioned where it's like, this might be the person who knows Ozpin, we'll probably get to see what happens, you know, when he wakes up and where he finds himself at, so I'm really looking forward to that. I think I'm really excited to see what they do with this new team, and also what we get to see from the rest of the teams uh, within the series. I, we still need way more of um, Sun's team, because they still had nothing. They had like their one cool fight, and we still didn't get too much of them. So I'm looking forward to more you know, story from those characters. We still don't know what happened uh, with Penny, and how that stuff's gonna play out, because with her being a robot, that was the first thing. It was a crazy scene, but the first thing I thought was, well, she's a robot, they can fix her up. But 
you know, all that madness happened right after, I don't think anyone was able to, like, go back and literally, like, pick up the pieces. So, I don't really know how that's going to play out. I don't know what to expect from that. But I think with kind of, like, Team Junior and what they're going to be doing, with Ruby kind of going back into the city, I think we might get kind of uh, sort of the aspect of jumping back and forward through time because I'm sure they're going to show us how they transition from you know, their former selves at the end of Volume 3 to their current selves in Volume 4. Because whether it's, you know, six months or eight months or whatever, there's a lot that happened. Because, like I said, I'm sure there have been tons of people, hunters and huntresses, that have tried to get back and reclaim the city. So they may have set, like, a full-scale invasion on the city themselves, and that may have fallen apart. And there are just a million other things, like the stuff with Ozpan. You know, they might start up just the six months later or whatever, but I feel like we'll get... Um, quite a few flashbacks and flash forwards. I don't know if they'll do that just because of the length of the series or the length of the episodes, really. So I don't know if they will really go that route, but I feel like this is like the perfect opportunity. Whenever you have a time skip, that's when you tend to, you know, jump back and forth. So you get to do, you know, the present time and these are what the characters are like right now. And then we see where they truly change. Like, you know, how they are at the end of Volume 3 is a change, of course. But then it's like, what what else happened? Like, no one ever seemed to reconnect based on that footage. You know, I'm sure Ruby and Yang have stuck together, but Blake has been, like, off on her own. She's got, like, the jacket. It seems like she's just, like, off in the wilds. Weiss is probably trapped, to be totally honest. Based on her story, especially if you've read the manga, uh, you get some more detail on, like, her backstory, but you can just tell from the show itself, like, she was kind of trapped. Like, she had to escape so that she wasn't in the shadow of her sister. And then even before that, she was just meant to be, like, this one thing, you know, based on her her father's ideals. So I can imagine her having sort of, like, a, unsurprisingly, sort of, like, just the princess trapped in the tower sort of thing. And I think that would actually be cool for her character to see her just so stuck in... You know, like, she, you know, went through the world kind of falling apart, and now she's trapped in, like, the perfect location and everything. It's like, oh, everything's great here, but she knows, you know, what the world is really like and how everything's falling apart. I would love if they followed that for her character, and I feel like they will, because, you know, like, her dad came and picked her up at the end of Volume 3, and it's like, alright, I'm getting you out of here. And that's all there is to it. So I feel like we'll get to see a lot of that. We still have a ton of stuff with our villains. You know, who knows if Roman is still alive. I hope he is because I don't want him to be dead. We got Roman. We still got Neo out there. Um, we never really got, like I mentioned, um, Junior and the twins. They were in the, it was the Volume 2 opening. And I thought they would come back, but they never really did. So I kind of hope we do get to see them again in this most recent volume. And maybe see how some of the villains have adapted and some of the people who were, like, bad but kind of in between. Like, Junior was kind of just, like, you know, just a guy who did illegal stuff, but he's not, like, Cinder-level villain. So I'd like to see how they manipulate some of the villains and, like, you know, kind of the in-between villains and then, like, the main villains and how things have changed. But I think we'll get to see a lot more about the adults, which I'm very excited for. Of course, we're going to get, you know, more on all of Team Ruby as well as uh, Jean, Nora, and Ren, which... I don't know what they're going to do with Jean. I don't know how, you know, like, how that's going to mess with him. But I'm very excited to see that play out. So, looking forward to this most recent volume. Can't wait to hear the music, of course. Like, that's, it's Ruby. So, of course, new volume, new music. Can't wait to see what they do with that. I don't know how sad the music is going to be. I mean, they had a pretty good song playing during the footage I saw. But, I don't know, it's just, it, everything's just so sad and depressing. It's like, one girl got killed, one girl got her arm chopped off, the whole city's destroyed, they don't know where the professor is. He's, like, the strongest person that could possibly fight back, not including Ruby, of course, with the silver eyes. But everything's just destroyed. Everything's just, like, depressing and chaotic. But then there's, like, us as viewers, it's, like, just the hype of a great series coming back. It's like, I don't, it's weird. It makes you feel super happy and then super sad because, like, people have died and... The city's still destroyed, the world is separated, and, you know, no one can figure out what's happening outside of, like, snail mail and, you know, really old school stuff. So, I'm excited to see what we get. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more use of semblances in this most recent volume. I think it'd be really cool. It appears that we're going to get it for sure from Ruby, but I'd love to see that a lot more. Even from characters where we already know the semblance, because I feel like we really only got to see it a lot from Weiss and Blake. They really utilized it the most. 
And I would love to see Sun use his a lot more. That was really cool. Um, I don't believe Neptune ever used his. I, I don't believe he did. So there are just a lot of, you know, semblances I would still like to see. I don't know what's going to happen um, with Adam, but I want him to come back because he... This whole thing, if you watch my reviews, I went through this whole thing where it's like, Adam was my favorite. And then he came in just a little too late because um, Raven came in and it was like, I don't care about Adam anymore. And then when he came back, I was like, I was wrong. I was wrong to not keep him as my favorite character because he just, everything he did was just perfect as a villain. So I want him back. Honestly, I want him to take over as the main villain. Like if he, I don't know how he'd end up doing that because he'd have to kill both Cinder as well as like the main um, antagonist. So that probably wouldn't end up happening. But I would love that because he is such a badass freaking character. And him and Blake, and I would love to see them go up against each other now because Blake couldn't beat him back then. But it's a little bit later. She's probably only been fighting Grimm and just, you know, been off on her own. So I would love to see how all that stuff plays out. But I'd definitely love to know what you guys are expecting or just hoping for or you know, what you guys thought about it, you know, if you saw the footage already, we'd love to know what you guys are looking forward to in this most recent volume, or in, our, in the next volume, I know I say most recent, but we'd definitely love to know what you guys are thinking, so please comment below, let me know, um, just everything, like, what do you guys want to see as well, that's always a big thing, because with the episodes being so short in the seasons, in general, being fairly short, considering everything's like, you know, about 15 minutes or so, um, there's always a lot left to be desired just because there's so little time that they have to make the show because it's Rooster Teeth, they have a million other things as well. So there's always a ton of stuff I still want to see. Like I said, semblances just from everybody is what I always want to see. I don't need more characters. I just need more semblances in action. But I would love to know what you guys want to see and, of course, what you guys thought about um, the footage and, of course, your expectations. What theories did you guys have that came true? What theories you know, have, are still unanswered that you still guys want to see come out. Like I said, I think the Yang getting the metal arm thing is like the biggest theory, and I'm assuming that's going to happen. And if not, she is going to be insanely badass with one arm, because they can do that. That would be really cool. I would love to see her um, fight with one arm, but I wouldn't hate it if she got a metal arm either. But like I said, I would love to know what you guys think, so please comment below, let me know. And of course, thanks for watching.